Anime is defined as a style of Japanese film and television animation that is still heavily centered in Japan. While many people know of anime, those who actually indulge in it are few and far in between. But as someone who enjoys the medium and wants others to experience it also, I always keep coming back to one question. Does anime as a medium ever stand a chance of becoming mainstream here in the West? Well, yes and no. It's a pretty simple question, but not as simple as many may first think. To most people in the West, the word anime is associated with the idea of cartoons. To us, animation can only fall between the categories of something I used to watch as a kid or of complete idiotic and humorous late night adult comedy. Nonetheless, there is no mention or thought as to what is found between these two contrasts. Is there something more to animation than just superheroes and fat disproportionate people slapping each other senselessly and making racist jokes? And it is this misconception on animation which causes Western society to have a narrow-minded opinion on what animation can and cannot be. Addressing the biggest issue that prevents it from being acknowledged by the masses, animation is simply not a widely accepted medium that can tell a mature story. Why does this matter? Well, if we look at the most highly critically acclaimed shows coming from America, it is visible that they are all garnered towards a more mature audience. The Game of Thrones, The Breaking Bads, all these shows are far from being children friendly. However, for anime to ever stand a chance of ever being acknowledged by Western society as a viable medium of storytelling, it is this huge untapped audience here that will do it. The problem is that to Western society, animation is purely not a medium to convey a mature subject matter. To the Japanese people, anime is a cherished and respected art form that has become part of their culture. To them, it is merely a medium to convey any and all stories they have to share with their viewers. As a result, Japanese animation covers a diverse range in genres of stories. However, the fact that most Western people have no clue about how romantic, dark, or how gory anime can be is due to the fact that Western broadcasting organizations and companies choose to censor out overseas works and only use the ones they think will be the least offending to their audience. In short, anime has proven itself time and time again that it can tell a mature story, but it does also have its own childish image to contend with over here in the West. All of this goes back to the early anime boom in the 2000s, the time when Pokemon ruled the world and girls were looking up at their Sailor Moons and guys were getting hyped on the Dragon Ball Zs. The closest anime ever comes to being mainstream is from Disney animated movies like Frozen or even comedic animations like The Minions. Heck, even the scene in The Lion King where Mufasa dies has been viewed as a highly controversial piece of animation to most of society, while the Japanese people saw this as merely another part of life. Now people will argue that anime has become mainstream in the West since Hayao Miyazaki Spirited Away won the 2002 Academy Award for Best Animated Feature Film. However, that was some time ago, and since that short moment in the spotlight, Japanese animators have not since seen much of the limelight in the West. Sure, they win big overseas, but the fact that most people only know the name Hayao Miyazaki supports the fact that anime isn't as popular over here as people make it out to be. As a result, Japanese animators are now more focused on if their work will sell overseas because they want to make more money. This fact goes against the Japanese ideology of not needing to censor or tone down their works because they do not see anything as being deviant to society. And that is really the sad thing about Western society. We obtain pre-notions of what animation is at such a young age that once we need to make the decisions ourselves, we just censor out whatever we do not find to fit inside this idea of cartoon kids show or late night adult humor show. There is such a set line between good and bad that people see anime as having a very expected and boring plotline. As a result, it's hard to think of anime as purely a medium to express an artist's thoughts and emotions and not just some show with a moral for children. Most Japanese animations have shown to have a very intricate plot and characterization, but it is just a question of if Westerners have been exposed to seeing these types of works. Anime can be a very realistic interpretation of life itself, and thus depicts the hard fact that people do die when they are killed, and that good does not always prevail. Although, let's not forget about the other big image it has to deal with. Anime is weird. Yes, it is weird. Even among some of the more toned down shows it has, anime is still buried underneath a mountain of naked girls with breasts the size of planets and the type of stories that would raise eyebrows if you even tried describing the plot to someone. And this is all society sees of anime, a clique of odd and unsociable nerds who spend their days watching childish fantasies with a plot that is pretty much impossible to understand. The public's image on anime isn't the greatest, and it's pretty much the same image and pre-notions gamers and Star Trek fans had to deal with in the past. Therefore, for anime to ever stand any chance of becoming mainstream, it needs to break out of this preconception the public has of it. Although the image of cartoons is highly inaccurate for the diverse medium that anime is, in terms of primary demographic, it's still primarily geared towards teenagers. Even in terms of movies, there isn't really anything that can compete with top critically acclaimed Hollywood works have to offer, unless if it falls back to the family-friendly Disney-esque type films, which doesn't really change any preconcessions of anime as a storytelling medium. 
As it stands, anime just isn't mature enough to break out of its pre-existing image of the general populace. There is still not enough anime that can appeal to a mature audience, and Western society needs to get over the fact that death should not be seen as a taboo for children, but merely a part of life. Society needs to stop protecting children from the truth and let them know people die when they are killed, and that you bleed red blood when you lose a limb and or are injured. You cannot regenerate your body parts, and there is no such thing as being invincible. However, people would rather reject other cultures' works and the truth for the safety and innocence of others. Simply put, anime is not ready yet, though that's not to say it never will be. The prospects for increased anime awareness are certainly looking up. Nonetheless, anime viewers are right now a cult, a niche fanbase within an already niche part of geek culture. In the end, anime has been a mainstay in Japanese culture, and Americans are only starting now to scratch the surface.